Hello everyone. In this video, I want to um, correct for uh, two of the, um, I would say, probably um, unwanted uh, maybe mistakes that I made in my previous videos and clarify on two important things that are uh, could be confusing to you. So one of them is individual versus uh, common datums and uh, although I have a video on common datums but I have to emphasize it one more time the other one is composite versus multi single segment feature control frame okay uh, so um, the symbols that I used were um, probably confusing and um, I have to correct for that so one of them is if I have a positional tolerance and I have three separate individual datums A, B, C versus I have them all in one separated by dash, these two things are different. They are not the same. In my previous videos, if you uh, look at my uh, videos, especially this one, this last one, the complete GDNT example, um, I looked at it, that one, and then in uh, probably the one that I talked about, Steps of GDNT, which is, uh, let me find it for you, here, this one. In these two, specifically, I guess uh, I used uh, basically this format, which is wrong, okay? So here, this one, if you look, I had one of my earlier videos right after YGDNT, and uh, here, this one, um, let, let me find it here, this guy, common datum feature. So I explained that when you have dash between the datums, that means it's a common datum feature. And this was the picture that I used. So I said, if I put both A and B in one of these uh, basically cells and separate them by a dash, that means both of these datums will be used at the same time for inspection and they basically have a common uh, feature these features they have a common datum in this case the axis so this means they share the common datum and they are common datum features this one is separate in this case a b and c might not have anything in common okay there are three separate individual datums here if i say such a thing means A, B, and C, they all share the same datum. So in these videos, as I said, that I talked about steps of uh, GDNT and this last one, complete GDNT, uh, where I use the positional tolerance for the holes. Again, uh, inadvertently, um, I guess, I use this one. And so uh, this one is wrong for such scenario. Okay, we had to use this one. And the way to do it in SOLIDWORKS, and that was my mistake, is, let me show you. So here is, for example, uh, a, a hole here, and I want to put a um, positional tolerance on that, right? So I click here, and then I go with a GDNT box, double click here, and say I want the position, then put a number and the shape of the region, now, when you say add datum, you see here it adds A. The, mistakes, the mistake that I made was I added B and C here. And you see, when you do that, it counts them as one common datum and separate them by a dash. You should not do this. If you want three individual datums, you should not add these second and third window here. Actually, you have to click here and say add a new and then here say B, and then add a new, and then say C. Okay, that's how you get these separate cells not separated by dash. So this is what was intended in those two videos, okay? And uh, again, uh, sorry for the mistake, just wanted to clarify that this is what I needed to use, and I used the wrong uh, symbol here. Although I knew the difference, but I definitely used the wrong symbol. So that's one thing. The next thing is uh, in the other video that I talked about a composite tolerance and a pattern of holes. Uh, I used this symbol for the positional tolerance. And this symbol is different from this one. This one is the composite 
tolerant zone. This one is called multi-single segment tolerant zone. Okay, so it's like two separate individual uh, feature control frames or segments that are put on the top of each other. Here, it's a composite effect. So in that video, let me show you that. In that video, which is, um, should be this one. The symbol, again, that was used, you see there are two phi's. It should have been only one phi. So this is what it should have been used. Although the idea was correct, it, is a com it was a composite, the thing that I explained. But the symbol was used was this guy, and that is wrong. So I want to explain the difference between these two so uh, we know why one should be used versus the other one. So this one is on the right side is composite. As you can see, both position tolerance zones are merged into a single one. And here, uh, the bottom part is uh, basically talking about the relative position of the holes, the top, one, the top one is talking more about the absolute position of the holes. And in the video that I have, if you look here, so here I fixed it. If you look here, uh, there should be only one position tolerance symbol. And uh, the top one is controlling the absolute position of the center of the holes, these bigger yellow circles. And uh, there is no movement here because I'm using all three of my datums. In the bottom one, I'm controlling the relative position of them and the pattern. And I'm only using A, so it's free with respect to B and C. Therefore, these smaller blue uh, circles with a diameter of 0.1, which are controlling the relative position of these uh, centers, they can move left and right, they can go up and down, and they can rotate in plane. So the orientation of this pattern can change and the location of it can change as long as these blue circles holding the centers of these uh, holes are within moving within these bigger yellow circles. Okay, so that was the composite uh, tolerance zone. And in this picture that I have right now, it's the same thing, except here B is also added. And so the only difference this one has with respect to the previous one I showed you is the same composite thing. This B is added, so now uh, if we go back, in this case, these blue balls can only go left and right, up and down. They cannot rotate anymore. Okay, so in this case, this rectangle has to stay what? Has to stay um, completely, um, basically oriented like a regular rectangle with horizontal and vertical edges, right? But it can shift inside what? It can shift inside this, um, these four uh, bigger yellow um, circles, okay? So it can go something like this. Let's see if I can move it here for you. So you see that's my rectangle and it can go something like that. Okay, it can move inside of it, right? It can move inside of that, but it cannot rotate. Okay, it can go in both directions, up and down, left and right. While in this uh, multi-segment that you have two separate feature control frames and it's not composite, there are some differences. What are the differences? In a um, multi-single segment feature control frame, first of all, the two control frames are independent from each other. So it's not like the bottom one is a refinement of the top one. They can be completely different. And this bottom one can come and completely basically overwrite this stuff for the top one. Okay. So you see the bottom frame refines both the location and the orientation of the top frame. While here in the composites, the bottom one is to refine the what? The orientation of the top one, not the what? Not the location. And the bottom one can have any order of datums as long as it's not a repeat of the top one. So here, as you can see, the order here is A, B, C, and this is A, or it could be A, B, right? And the order is exactly the same. Now, they're not, uh, th this one does not have a C, but in this case, 
not only the bottom one cannot be C, so the bottom one and top one, they don't have the same order of the same uh, for, uh, datums all together. Also, the order can change. So here, maybe B comes first, then A goes second, okay? So the order can be in any order. Of course, it's a different meaning. The order can be different, and definitely the bottom one should not have here A, B, C, because that's the same as the top one, okay? So, uh, again, one more time. In the composite one, the bottom framework only refines the what? The orientation of the pattern provided on the top one, right? And the location to itself, the relative locations, but in this multiple single segment feature control frame, the bottom one refines both the what? The location and orientation. And so you might say in this uh, bottom case, that rectangle that we formed by those blue uh, balls, in which direction can it move? Well, look here, in this case, B is also a mandatory part, and remember B is this one here, and you have this uh, dimension 30. So in this case, basically all that uh, rectangle between the blue lines can do is to go left and right, because the other degree of freedom of that is taken away by that 30. So in this case, it can only go like this. That's all it can do. It cannot even go up and down because it has to observe that 30, which is with respect to what? With respect to B. So in this case, this guy can only go left and right. And in this case, it can do what? It can go both left and right and top and bottom. Okay. In this case, you don't have the uh, limitation of that um, 30 because it's a composite thing. And so it can have both motions. And in this uh, composite one, if I get rid of B, it can also rotate. Okay, so these are different uh, meanings and applications. And I just wanted you to know that if I have both of these phi's versus I have one of them, that's a big difference. Okay, so uh, in SolidWorks, if you want to do that, let me show you. Uh, so here, let me add it one more time. So here, I add the position tolerance zone here, right? Position tolerance, then uh, 0.5 cylindrical, add the datum, and then it's A, and then uh, B, and then C, right? So it's the top one. Now, if I want to add the bottom one, double click here, click and say a new frame, and again, look, phi, right? 0.1 and then here I can say a or a B right let's say a B just like here okay so this is a multi segment now if I merge these two together it will be a composite how do I merge look I double click in this fire region and then you see here it says composite below or if I click on this bottom one it says composite above you see so if I say that then it will merge both of them into a one and you get a composite Okay, so that's how you do it in SOLIDWORKS. So hopefully this, in this video, I could clarify some of the things that were um, said in a few of my previous videos and they could have been a source of what? A source of confusion or mistake to you. So um, hopefully they could clarify for you. And uh, by the way, one of my uh, friends who is uh, extremely knowledgeable in GDNT, he uh, warned me about this and he said, hey, uh, I guess you need to clarify that. And I really appreciate the feedback he gave me and all of the feedback that you provide to me. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.